Hello everyone, my name is Ever Barbero, and today I'd like to talk about example 9.1 in my textbook, Finite Element Analysis of Composite Materials Using Abacus. In this video we talk about simulation of damage in laminated composites. Here we can see an X-ray picture of a 070-70 symmetric laminate subjected to tensile load. Matrix cracks develop in the 70-70 laminas, clearly visible in the X-ray picture. You will learn how to predict the crack density, or number of cracks per unit length that appear as a function of the load or applied strain. Also, you will learn how to use an external user general subroutine to allow Abacus to compute crack density. First, we set the work directory. Next we create a part to represent a 10 by 10 mm shell and we call it, laminate. The names we assign are important, because later we use a script that uses some of these names. Still in module part, we use tools to create a set called whole laminate, so that later we can refer to the part by its name. We do not define the material properties now, but rather wait to define them using a Python script, just before we set up the job. Instead, we go directly to module assembly, to define an instance of the part. Now we define a step to apply the in-plane strain to the plate. We set the time period equal to the maximum strain we want to apply, so that time and strain are the same. In tab incrementation, set the initial and maximum size to a small number and the minimum to a very small number. While in module step, edit the field output request, to get the state variables, sdb stored for visualization. In module load, we use the boundary conditions manager to set support conditions, and then the applied strain. First, symmetry boundary condition X, on the left vertical edge of the plate.
Next, symmetry boundary condition Y, on the bottom horizontal edge of the plate. Next, restrict rigid body motion by clamping the plate at the origin with an end caster boundary condition. Next, we apply a displacement U1 on the right vertical edge of the plate, to produce a set strain, thus loading the plate. To apply 1.873% strain, we need displacement equal to the strain times the length of the plate, 1.873 over 100 times 10. Finally, we restrict the out-of-plane displacements, to be sure we get pure in plane deformations. In module mesh, on the toolbar second below the menu, make sure that part, laminate is selected, because earlier we set the instance to dependent, so it will mesh the part but not the instance. For element type, we select S4R, which is a 4 node shell with reduced integration. Then we seed with a global size of 10, which is the length of the plate, to get just one element for the entire plate. At last we mesh. On the bottom of the display, switch to the python shell by clicking on the three brackets. Next we need to enter the material properties into the input file, like this, but we cannot do it with CAE, because CAE does not know how many material properties we use in the software plugin. Before we submit the job, the input file should look like this. In addition, we need to insert another line in the input file, down here, to tell Abacus to initialize the state variables, which in this example are the crack densities, to a very small value, to start the analysis. We could do this manually, by editing the input file, but it is better to use a Python script, less chance of errors, and it will be easy for you to understand what the material properties and other variables are all about. The Python script is here. We just copy paste into the Python shell in CAE. As soon as we paste it, Python will execute it. That will insert the two groups of lines into the input file, and create a job based on the modified input file.
If you see this warning, don't worry, just ignore it. Now we go back to normal use of CAE. In module job, the first job, based on model 1, does not have the lines inserted. You must use the second job, based on the file, job-ddm-exe.inp. Then, click submit, and wait for it to be done. When done, click results. You can monitor the progress of the execution. See the column called increments, which correspond to frames, see how the analysis progresses with more increments being completed. In the field output toolbar, select SDV4. In the legend, you see SDV equals 1.016. That is the crack density in the center lamina at frame 188, that corresponds to the final time, 1.873. Each SDV has a meaning, as explained in the textbook. Let's investigate the frames. Using menu results, expand step frame, to reveal a list of frames, increments, and time. Frame 188 is the last one corresponding to time and strain 1.873. Notice how the legend changes when we change the frame selected. Double click on increment 0, to see the legend SDV4, at the beginning of the analysis, you can see that the initial crack density was set to 0.02 cracks per mm, that is 1 crack every 50 mm. With a ply thickness of 0.125 mm, that is 1 crack every 400 ply thicknesses. Very small. By playing with this table, you can pinpoint the frame, time, and strain at which crack initiation takes place, when the crack density jumps from 0.02 to a higher value. You are seeing the center lamina. Other laminas crack at different strain or do not crack at all. Comparison with experimental evidence is excellent. Okay, that's it for today. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can find more details in the textbook, by following the link in the description. Thank you.